it conflates knowledge too. And second, it does not take in the empirical reality of the political and epistemological quarrel, but in a way argued philosophically and suggests truth is dead. In contrast, I'd say that a close look at the phenomenon shows that, the contrary, truth has never been more vigorous and useful than today, in a slightly different perspective. In what follows, I would like to explain this along the lines of a praxeology of truth, referring to the analytical concept of the truth scheme and the truth figure, as well as two crucial parameters, identity politics and attention. But before I start, let us very briefly comment on the conservation of knowledge and truth. Truth is not knowledge, truth is not facticity. People know things and they know how to do things, and there is no need for asking about truth then. It is merely a facet of the of most prominently and still science producing. The sciences produce knowledge and take for producing and developing facts. But truth is a second order concept relates to the observation and judgment of knowledge. Truth only plays a role when this knowledge is being criticized, questioned, carded. Truth enters the game if respect knowledge questions or spirit person or group that possesses knowledge is being questioned or perfect. And in this case, and we'll come back to it later. The invocation of truth is a means to differentiate between groups, to integrate a group, to ask each subject to commit itself to the group's cause, to confess his or her devotion. Now let me start by introducing the praxeology of truth, my late colleague Azuta and me about a couple of years ago. The praxeology of truth for the one concepts, it also informed this workshop, which once took my quote from the bottom papers, um, inquired into changes that affect two figures and scenes after 1989 and after the collapse of the bipolar world order. The praxeology of truth starts with the observation that we always encounter truth in complex sort of whether in respect to scientific facts, hypothesis, to statement or conditions, seldom in reality this truth satisfy the ideal demands made on it by philosophical theories. What we see is not the scientists squabbling over the correct interpretation of their findings or politicians fighting over the true interpretation of statements or actions. We do not only see fact finders trying to debunk fake news or media experts spin rumors in order to influence public opinion. We find divulged facts, purchased proofs, intricate scientific hypotheses, and confessions made under pressure, to name but a few examples. But even if such everyday dirty truth do not fulfill the moral norms tied to the truth, such as honesty or truthfulness, these norms are nevertheless effective. The praxeology of truth that is concerned with the analysis of the processes of constituting truth and the human interactions initiated by truth as being in a given situation cannot, or rather must not, simply presume a deal typically on form of establishing or negotiating truth. Instead, it has to focus on the interests and technologies that vary according to context and on the situational irritations and implications co determinants of the processes and, and, and the correspondingly differentiated practices of truth. The respective investigation of doing truth has to pay special attention to what usually is very disconnected um, as the ethics of truth although without any moral prefigurations. 
Its primary focus revolves around the moral economies of, more precisely, a political epistemology of truth. The object is not a moral concept of truth, but rather the effects of moral arguments and attitudes on the constitution of what I of the soul, and of that which is ultimately attributed liberty as a true norm. Where does praxeologies of truth begin if their object is not to be arbitrary? The praxeological approach is guided by problem observation of truth that are evident historically, discursively, or epistemically, and that fulfill functions. They invoke a norm of truth and assert its validity in order, at the same time, to explore a variety of deviations from it. In this way, the truth norm is repeatedly thematized, analyzed, criticized, and relative. The extent to which the norm is established, whether this intent at all, whether it is in fact already valid, or is supposed to be validated only within this problematization, of this is obviously a very difficult and dependent context. The praxeological analysis of such standardizations is less concerned with an ethical or epistemological evaluation than with the implications that accompany the invoking question, the perverting or deconstructing with norms. What if the respective actions are being taken in situations inside to particular participants, truth and subjectivity being closely interwoven? For this reason, the praxeology of truth is especially interested in the aforementioned dirt themes. And the concept proposed for the framework in which correspondingly would be able to cover is the true theme. For the actors who concurrently assume the function of transmission, propose the concept of true figure. With these parameters, it will be possible to describe the composition and the truth culture such as though that reason is the risk of new media landscapes. So, what are true themes and true figures? Um, maybe, Jan, you can put on the next slide. Yep. Okay. The concept of the truth theme can serve to emphasize this duational, procedural, and performative movement of the consolidation of truth. It is in such scenes that the expropriate reassurance of complement of truth takes as well as the correction of reputation. As a very phenomenon, these are counted primarily all of the interruption of accentuations of something felt in situations of learning or dispute, but all with demonstrations of power. Here, truth becomes visible as the current or mental state with both a series of deflexibilization, depth, rendering unambiguous, or through an act of closure that makes necessary the positioning of something. In truth scenes, the participants can appear in clips, battles, witnesses, chronicles, scholars, etc. They are assigned positions and the actions become observable. In this way, distinctions can be made between difference and performance effects. The spectrum of difference effects can be divided to those of pluralization, those of identification. Depending on whether the truth is confirmed or challenged, either on the one truth or that subject positions. Here, subject positions designate typified objectivity that is always normative in two respects as the epistemological basis of judgments and as the moral basis of its power. If the refutation of truth, for example, accompanies the test of new truths and subjectivities, the confirmation of truth consolidates and strengthens participate in the subject, in their subjectivity. The fact that truth is at stake, truth theme, also engenders performance effects, which can mean a confirmation, idealization, critique, displacement, this construction of truth and self 
this process can cannot always trace back the absence of participants, but also encompass unintended disruption. For instance, when an experiment fails, the argument proves reliable, or a doctor proves the theme of them. We can understand the truth scene as a truth gain to the extent that it represents a truth event requiring seriousness from idols. It takes hold of them and completes a movement designed neither for repetition nor for plan. Truth scenes, however, do not aim at the universal model of being knowledge. Rather, they make visible historical breaks and continuities by comprehending truth as a situational plan in which the plan of performance and repetition and first iterations of truth and subjectivity are different. Nevertheless, the central paradox of evoking the truth is also observable in them since the situational character of truth themes is accompanied directly with a definition as practice. Sorry, with a definition as transit rate, um, as by the way, as language. In truth scenes, the one truth involved that is neither temporal nor spatial nor tied to particular individuals. This claim entails heightened risk since truth is and fail. Hence, truth scenes also allow those members that have been introduced to protect against that forbiddency to emerge particularly clearly, for example, rituals, prescriptive performance restrictions, measures that with Foucault we can understand as procedures of a method. Truth scenes are also big observation constellations that require direct, direct forms of present, and that will also personify truth or remove it into the access of proximity and victim. Frequently such observers is um, frequently such observer constellations are tied to specific locations, depicting, for example, the court of law, the laboratory of the people. And moreover, are also quite a specific social practice and rhythms. Embedded in an overarching truth scenario, the concrete scenes are also framed immediately, for instance, in the form of a narrative or script that enables their transmission and adaption of the patient. Legal practices, for example, make clear the extent to which the process of establishing truth occurs within a limited scope, that is, According to a script set up by the legislator, the open only certain creative space for participant interaction. But there are some acts that derive from the common transitionate situation of definition And this is crucial to the dialogue crucial to the diagnosis of both truth, or as I would put it, the truth here. And with this, I come to um, the issue of identity. The common definition of true as something not related to a specific degree of purpose, as something beyond time and subjectivity, can indeed be empirically substantiated, albeit not in the sense that philosophers would. Even though it is tightly connected to particular practices of particular actors in particular situations, the invocation of truth seems to be meaningful only if truth is conceived of as non direct non-situated. And the effect of using the invocation of truth this way is of utmost important with respect to social integration or disintegration. Entering the truth game means to take time, to commit to a belief, to avow oneself a member of the group. Truth is a machine of integration, which assaults truth, demands confession. And it is this effect of the implication of truth that we observe today. The disintegration of international organizations and the communalization of society. The death of the social and vigorous roles of it 
linked to a multiplication of true steam. Today, uh, two is F. Let me give you an example that shows that it is a way and um, possible and fruitful to link true social integration than to knowledge. In Brazil, I learned from anthropologist Sarah Lamb, there are so called verification committees that decide whether a person is black or not, which is important because if yet, he or she be part of an affirmative act program. The criteria used are not provided by birth certificates, but stem from plain sight. That is, in a process of about three to four minutes, a group of bureaucrats simply look for morphological evidence of a It's just back to common race attitude. And if the committee is not sure, it conducts a short interview with the person and asks if she or he believes to be black or not. Now we could say these judgments are truly evidence of um, so black skin or whatever, and the practices taken over asking are not apt to substantiate this image as true. So why conduct this interview at all instead of using a scientific instrument? DNA analysis, which basically the genetic inheritance, which might be even more effective. What is the use of horrific open companies like E that produce errors, lie, and everyday value basis? Isn't this a perfect example of post truth either? Because it is totally relevant to the committee states about the ways individual response to reality. Well, in order to understand what is going on, to separate the process of verification and the truth in the theme from any questions of epistemology. These committees exist and approach truth because a decision has to be made. So, the decision about whether or not someone gets into a motive expert. And if truth is brought into the confessions might be made that facilitate the decision. The person under scrutiny is being subjective. The missing expertise, the board members concerning the way, is not about at all, since the verification is not about truth, but about excitement and identity to a group that's about knowledge of future social interaction. And then, this is talk, yeah. um, the critic is speaking a bit uh, slower. Yeah. Because uh also when you bring zwischen schnell bist, dann verschluckt uh Slack teilweise die Worte. Ah, okay. Es gibt auch hier total Nachfrage. Ah, okay. Um yeah. da können wir nichts machen. Aber ich glaube ein bisschen langsam als jetzt schon. Okay. Thanks. So I know I started a bit early. Um right, so if true is brought into the game, confessions might be made that facilitate the decision. The person under scrutiny is being rejected for the missing expertise of the board members to turn away is not important at all, since the verification is not about truth, but about the assignment to an identity to a group, and thus about prognosis for future social interaction. Two things in this sense are performative acts of ordering the social world into truth. Truth is not a philosophical object, it is a social operator. If at all, it does not relate to knowledge, but to identity only. Next slide, good. An interesting outlet slightly more complicated example for this are the marches for science that have taken place in numerous cities throughout the United States and Western Europe. At these marches, scientists demonstrate for scientific truth. It is legit, for instance, a growing number of people, from the American president, 
believe that global performing is not man-made, or even not existent at all. But what is more intriguing is what the particle science demonstrates in respect to particles as a social operator. Let us take to the tributes to reclaim their role as gate is true. When scientists and scientists take political action, they seem to operate in the wrong medium, presenting the opinion of a specific social group, the academic establishment and its institutional power, just like other social groups would present their conviction. The bemoaned devaluation of scientific knowledge is not simply the outcome of postmodernism having prevailed, as any may be the most of the marketing scientists is it. It cannot, therefore, be cured by reinstalling what might be called a reactionary epistemology, that is, by reinstalling belief and absolute objectivity in the divide between truth and objectivity and subjectivity, or in correspondence theories of truth, like scientism tries to do since the science wars of the early 1990s. Yet it is the affirmation of this epistemological conviction the marching scientists now. Either you believe in objective truth or you don't. Either you believe in modern science or you don't. Now, what about those that represent a specific fraud to truth? The truth regime in person. Next slide, please. Truth figures, in generally, initially called attention to the fact that the visibility of the truth is also secured through figurative disability, whether of the naked truth, the naive provincial, or hard fact. These figurative and the form of truth provide evidence in specific contexts. Indeed, sometimes it puts the actual core of the truth problem and allow epistemology to congeal into a mere practice fact. Truth figures form, on one hand, imaginary of truth. On the other hand, they also pick from instruction about how individual or collective subjects could attribute their truth. Thus, truth statements draw up the notions of subject related truth as it and simultaneously put these to test. This capacity for truth is embodied and mediated a true figure which can serve a social, cultural, self-description the condition truth then and truth regimes, and thus makes truth visible in the nexus of social inclusion and exclusion. Truth figures, for instance, can be considered from the beginning as only visually capable truth on basis of their gender, their social status, or limited sense of person. The anthropological dimension of truth is also evident. One finds catalogs of the senses that are necessary for the perception of truth. As soon as truth figures based terms the set certainty, they can be analyzed as specific use of perception and attention. Thus the body also determines truth calculation according to the qualities attributed to it, thereby invoking the nexus of knowledge and power. The process of establishing truth can also lead to inclusions and exclusions. For instance, if a witness is proved to have loved or depicted in more dynamic situations of transformations. While figures such as the compassion or the medium who has a revelation exists primarily in what the religious code truth gene. There are also figures such as dissident, nihilist, 
the mechanic of the climate change development, who oppose existing tools and being with tools or even reject the necessity of truth at all. Truth figures all provide insight in different temporal concepts of truth, such as progress, salvation history, or an action, which have their correspondence higher ideas of truth needed or immediate. While truth seems that serve as instrument for the analysis of updated search version, truth figures address the diachronic dimension within which the transition shock truth occurs by body their recurring contents, critics, or views. As soon as truth capacity is seen, for example, to social sector, personal integrity or rhetorical skill, they may truth seem transparent in regard to historical, social, or media conditions. Thus, two figures direct attention to the temporal stabilization or destabilization of specific truth and their justification. With the internal figural relationships in which truth is usually stand, these can accordingly be the positional context. However, mm -hmm. interfigural context can also take shape as an observation factor. Whether the physical phenomenon recognizes typical similarities or the detective identifies truth, whether the eyewitness found the accuracy of his or her testimony in subjective figures, the judge issues the decision, the court reporter criticizes the act of consistency, or the street doctor is exposed in false fact. All of these constitute painted figurative networks whose continual transformation, establishment, expansion, and reaction should be investigated. So now, after these uh, some of the atheist systematic agreements on the analytical parameters of the flexibility of truth, let me now come back to the current discussions on agreement called truth. In order to add one more important feature to supplements, see fix at the interpretation of truth as a social operator, and that is the tech. In search for truth in current media landscapes, we usually start with looking at it. If you Google truth.0, what you get is an EU sponsored project in citizen science, in which six of British observatories from all European and two African countries provide data on local environment. Slide, please. If you try the German Arheit 2.0, I you are led to a Facebook site presenting a, not at all surprising, mixture of media bashing, critique of capitalism, anti Semitic conspiracy theory, official Russian propaganda, and what is meant for natural cosmetics. Slide, please. Uh, and, and, and I haven't uh, Googled it in Russian since there are too many different terms that could have been used from uh, Istina to Pravda, Nauchnos, uh, Yanni, and other things that I learned from sociologist Maria Zimmer. Um, so both the English and the German web pages show in their own impressive way, and this will probably become even more obvious in the case of social media, that the regimes of truth, which we now have shifted, and that the regimes of truth which we know have shifted or are maybe even disappearing, and that we cannot get hold of the truth a means of the conventional instruments and truth theory. 
In fact, the delegitimization de de of modern truth figures, such as the scientist or the investigative journal, we observe a decentralization, multiplication of communication channel, which a previously unknown plethora of statements containing truth which cannot be checked using traditional verification practices for the reason of their sheer quantity alone. This truth 2.0, the big data truth, is more related to algorithms attacking than to familiar verification practices. In an age of ever simplified access to information with Twitter, Facebook, Google, and others, at the most prominent platforms used. Scientific facts and what are presented as such increasingly follow the code of information, non information, that characterizes the system of the mass media. The main feature of this information lies in relate to time, as Nicholas Lupin put it in 1995, and I quote Lupin. Information cannot be repeated. As soon as it becomes an event, it becomes non-information. A news item run twice might still have its meaning, but it loses its information value. If information is used as a cocktail, this means that the operations in the system are constantly and inevitably transforming information into non information. As the system is constantly feeding its own output, that is, knowledge of certain facts, back into the system on the negative side of the code as non information, it forces itself constantly to provide new information. In other words, the system makes itself obsolete. And of course, news that is information is being produced amongst others <coughs> following selections, surprise, conflicts, quantity, local relevance, norm violations, scandal, etc. And to these loop on your selectors, I'd like to add truth speaking, which equally generate attention. As a machine of escalation, truth leads to conflicts. Furthermore, the deviation of information that corresponds to the norms of a true regime is able to generate attention, as it might be understood to be scattered. If social media and the internet spread and circulate make, they can reassign news value to them by branding them as true or false, triggering reactions that keep these values live. One of those is the opening of a true game about fake news, a dance around true and false, game that in itself generates attention and entails economic facts, as communication theorist Jason Arson. Uh, it goes hand in hand with new truth figure, with the truth figure of the checker or debunker. Slide, please. So the fact checker or debunker, um, who sometimes works individually and sometimes is part of an organized full time rumor tracker. Slide, please. Parsons' argument concerns media techniques that aims at the fragmentation of truth as an effect of the multiplication of communication channels and the end of hegemonial truth regimes in the age of mass media. I would argue in a slightly different way. While the multiplication of communication channels has been had a damaging effect 
on traditional and truth regimes like that of academia, you know? truth has not been fragmented, but multiplied as an effect social fragmentation and the disintegration of overarching international institutions and organizations. And the self-assertion and stabilization of small communities, specifically via social media, is facilitated by means of joint growing boundaries between true and false. If this analysis is true and the new cultures of truth are those dependent on tangible economies, it might explain the emergence of a number of relatively young truth figures, like the PR specialists, the spin doctor, the goal, and the fact finder. Their expertise points to a shift of truth regimes with tension and emotions at their center, easily manipulated following economic or political agendas. In the end, things, truth is the signature of our era of communalization, of social and media fragmentation, of multiple and multiplied identities, and their algorithmic constitution. So, truth, not dead. Thank you very much. Should I put on the last slide? <laughs> uh, all right, uh, thank you very much. Um, and I think we're now we, we just open the floor for discussion. You yeah. for, 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 for questions. It was a bit, bit hard to understand um, for some technical reasons, I think, but um, so I would also give the opportunity to ask for specific things you might just have not uh, understood for um, whatever technical reasons, at least for this open. Maybe we can. Yeah. Maybe we can. Maybe we can, can switch the. The slide, what is this because as more is this one? Research 
um, from a media study that actually have been taken in other way by historians of science in order to explain um, specific capabilities and practices, specific um, situations. Um, but um, maybe um, one um, uh, mistake um, can help uh, the um, analysis of the communication in the case of truth. It can, it can stick to the or to the uh, And that is the relation between knowledge and truth. It is interesting to see that uh, the um, historical etymology of the one field in the history of science that Gilles had been dealing with the, the uh, um, with breaking down big epistemological concepts to specific cultural situations, such as objectivity, facts. Uh, and uh, um, similar grand concept that historical epistemology has not talked about truth because somehow uh, there is a self understanding also um, scholars from the history of science um, a self understanding that if you if you work as a scholar that you produce knowledge and the knowledge is somehow true. <laughs> but um, this distinction between knowledge and truth is seldom discussed in all these fields. And now, if you look at the public communication, I think um, this problem can be found um, as well. That is, um, um, take the, the, the uh, not only the marks of science, um, of course, but the communication in uh, different um, media uh, often really evolves uh, uh, around um, yeah, in, in, around um, facts, knowledge that uh, supposedly uh, um, and also true that supposedly uh, are something simpler, simple, something beyond uh, um, specifics of the medieval system. Um, the, the, the public opinion, at least, well, let me, maybe uh, at least in, in Germany and uh, and parts of Western Europe, always relates to something. Uh, that stems from science and that has nothing to do with concrete situations. And this is exactly the problem because the network cannot analyze uh, um, the calculations and what the vocation of truth does in a specific. So, uh, put it um, uh, hopefully more clearly and uh, way shorter. Uh, 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 there seems to be some kind of a philosophical, a um, critique and philosophical understanding of truth underlies the idea of post truth and that underlies um, the analysis of um, our epistemological problems. And you can find that in the history of science, but more than that, you find it in philosophy and in everyday philosophy. And um, this is exactly the problem that has to be tackled. Mm -hmm. Thanks. More questions? Or comments? Okay, can you hear me? Hi. So yeah. Can you pull it from here? Um, can you also see me? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>
from uh, about the Luhmann quote um, on information. I have a question. I have a question on temporality. Did Luhmann have in mind something like amnesia or public amnesia? I, um, because when you forget that something was an information, it can get an information again, of course. I just uh, remember the case of the movie The Death of Stalin, which came out uh, two years ago, and everybody was outraged in, in, in Russia because Stalin was lying in his own urine, and uh, people had forgotten that 20 years before uh, there was the Russian movie Khrushchev Machina, Khrushchev Machina, where Stalin was lying in his own feces. So that was um, clearly. The, the case, the Luhmann quote doesn't really explain, or does it, I don't know, maybe I, I missed something in your um, elaborations. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not a Luhmannian, so I can't really tell what it meant. Uh, as far as I uh, understood the crucial thing about the modern mass media, and the interesting thing is that he all that at the time where um, there were no media landscapes that are play in the early 90s. So this is basically about television and, and the press. Um, and um, so the basic idea is that um, the, the uh, system of mass media only works if it completely feeds news. And um, as soon as you know, a, or as you have gotten an information, um, it is not new to you anymore, uh, and therefore does not uh, fall out of the system. So the system has to produce new news uh, in a permanent uh, 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 circle, and uh, of things that have been forgotten, be refed as new. So um, this is taken into account, but um, the thing that he is most concerned with, as far as I understood him, is the ways in which um, things can be made use, and um, that is um, um, different uh, procedures of assigning attention or bringing attention. Truth is something that evoke 
in order in order to make a point or to uh, to um, um, put pressure on people to agree what what you are saying or to uh, become a member of your group and in on these uh, on, on this practice practice level. Um, um, it is um, easier to understand um, the theology too if you look religion, because um, um, to speak to your priest and tell him the truth about your sins, so to confess, um, restores you to uh, uh, restores your worship Christianity. You um, uh, said it's talking to the answer, right? Um, and so religious practices, rituals like that, which truth is being involved, um, can tell us a lot more about how truth shifts than the um, relation between science and truth. So, um, the, the problem that philosophers have, um, like for instance philosophers of the so-called new realism, is that they conflate true and knowledge. And um, so, so that I think um, the biggest part of the current discussion in post group. But if you take in these um, the examples from religion, then I think you can way more easily understand how the invocation of truth first, what the Sorry for the, the technical problems, and I also had some kind of triple feedback, so I didn't understand what I was telling you. So, actually, maybe I would have an additional question because the article that you mentioned, the Praxeology of Truth, exists in an English version, English working version, as far as I know. And maybe yeah. it would be good, maybe it would be possible that we could distribute it among the participants because it's the basis also of your talk, you know, no. of course, informally. Okay. Uh, I can send it uh, mm -hmm. I can send it over. Uh, okay, then I think that would be great because then uh, for many it would be more... Oh, I will also distribute the German version and then... Uh, exactly. Or well, I can just send over the talk because this is more an actualized between version. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that would be actually great. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I have a nice day. I'm sorry to not be participating anymore, but uh, actually right, the, the, the technical problems are too big, so it would be of any use. So you send your papers back to me. Go on. We have videos also. Uh, okay, that's better. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, okay, then thank you for being here for the keynote. and.